these are many of the storyboard books of Miyazaki's films. I absolutely love them. They're a must-have for animation, you know, professionals, animation studios. And if you want to study animation, I just recommend watching animation movies, specifically, the, you know, the Ghibli films, and then studying these storyboard books, and then maybe even, maybe even art books, because that shows a lot of the design behind it and the concept art. A lot of people will recommend, especially on the Reddit animation forums, um, they recommend the Animation Survival's Kit. They always mention it over and over again, and I do not think that's necessary at all. Um, there's a lot of obvious stuff you should learn when you're starting, when you're doing, just doing the animation, like how you know you're squashing elements and stretching them, and all sort of techniques. You should be able to pioneer on your own and discover it on your own. You know, you shouldn't be animating a ball bouncing. You shouldn't be animating a walk cycle of the full body of the person walking. Most shots you only see like from waist upwards of someone walking and you won't even have a ball bouncing most of the time like it's randomly. You only got to focus on the shots, compositions and then it's like okay what parts are being animated and then just focus on the story and the important stuff that's all that matters. The important stuff will help drive to pioneer all the techniques that you need This manga by Miyazaki is really amazing, um, I highly rate it. I wish more manga was honestly just, I guess art in general, hey, and animation films were just more in like a Ghibli style, where you're focusing on like the hand-drawn sort of vibe. If this manga was a film, everyone would love it, and so that's why I recommend it to everyone to read. And that's actually similar for pretty much every Ghibli-related manga, you know, that's out there. This is called something like The Tree in the Middle of the World. It's by Makiko Futaki and it's amazing. Hey? It's, I tried translating a lot of it. It's, it takes a long time, pretty hard, but I, you can sort of tell the gist of the story. How cute is this mini version of the book? It's good to have, honestly. Um, but, you know, I've got all versions of it and yeah, it's just, it's a dope book. I'm glad I have all versions of it. This is part of a trilogy by Makiko Futaki. Unfortunately, the very last book, she didn't quite finish it, so they sort of just strung it all together of all the concept art to make it work. It made it harder for me to translate it and understand the story, but it's I, I sort of get it. Uh, the first two books read very, very easily, and um, I really like, really like it. I really love the style. Again, it's that similar, it's just pencil-based penciling is like the main thing and then, then you're just doing like your colouring and the story is dope. This is a print that came with the Makiko Futaki books I ordered. I love it, I framed it. And these are some extra little postcards that came. I'll be framing those as well. This is a Kim Jong Gi book that happened to be cheap on Amazon when I was ordering all the other books. I took the chance and bought it. I'm really amazed with it, of course. I've seen parts of the books just online and they're all amazing, so it was, you know, it was great to get a hand on one. And yeah, I really love this book. It's so meta, if you know what I mean.
This is a Ghibli museum book. They hired a photographer that uses a smartphone because she's like, you know, really good with it and all that. And they really like that photographer. The book, you know, it's cool. It shows you a bit of an insider to the museum, but it's extra off the shelf. It's not really one to keep, I'd say. It's nothing that special, honestly. It's still cool to go flick through. The Boy and the Beast art book, it was just really cheap on Amazon, so I just grabbed it as well. I like the filmmaker, he did, you know, Summer Wars and Digimon the Movie, which I really, really love. And The Boy and the Beast, I felt it was like half on that level, but then half just like his other random, you know, vibes. But obviously reading, I think it was his Summer Wars book, or like there's a storyboard book or something, you know, he mentions like each movie he does is about a different aspect of his life. Like something about maybe kids because that's what's new in his life. Or it might be some other relationship problem or something in his life and it would, you know, his movie will be about that. So his movies are vastly different from one another. These were the very first art books I've ever had. Turning point, starting point. Pretty much like the Bible. There's just so much information packed in it. But the recent Toshio Suzuki book is probably something I prefer more than that. Toshio Suzuki mixing work with pleasure because the stories are a lot more entertaining and it's more condensed, like it's more quality instead of quantity. But those turning point and starting point is still, you know, like little mini bibles, bread brilliant books to read at least once. Um, you got Castle in the Air as a companion book to How's Moving Castle written by uh, Diane Wynne Jones, the author of How's Moving Castle. I got through I think the first half or three quarters before and I liked it before it um it's died it out for me. I'm not too sure what happened, it just didn't make sense or something like that. Uh, you got the My Neighbor Totoro, like a novel book. Uh, it's pretty basic. I didn't I don't think I ended up reading it all. Um, but there's some cool illustrations in it and it's 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 like a decent little book. But um yeah it's you know it's extra. But again a lot of these books are extra um, so you go outside of the art books of Ghibli and obviously and outside of Nausicaa and all love little mangas. Everything else is pretty much extra. Extra in the way that it's mainly for animation studios and similar professions. The Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind manga I would say is the best comic slash manga. So out of both categories of comic and manga, it's the number one best. I'd say after that it's maybe like the Berserk manga or something. It's actually amazing because Miyazaki he also, I would say, holds the number one spot for filmmaking. Um, I'll say he shares it maybe with James Cameron, maybe a few others. Miyazaki has around like 10 films as opposed to, you know, James Cameron probably has maybe like three films or so. Um, probably all the other sequels eventually as well that are going to be in that spot. But Miyazaki, you know, it's like 10 versus, you know, two or three films that are like on that level of best film. So I'll give him like the number one spot. So it's amazing he's also like the best comic slash manga artist as well. Uh, I gave all these books away in this picture to to an artist friend who's working on their own manga. I just felt like giving 